Now again, I know there is a powerful emotional connection that, that some people have toward Christmas. And I, I truly believe that some people, a few, really do try to honor the birth of Jesus on that day. But as a whole, as, a whole, as you look at our society, as you look at America as a whole, I think this scripture tells us what's really going on that I want to look at now. It's in Mark 7 and verse 6. He answered and said to them, Well has Isaiah prophesied unto you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. This is what I see going on for the most part. Now, obviously not everybody, but as I look at our society, this is what I see. People honoring Jesus with their lips. Oh, Jesus is the reason for the season. Isn't it great to know Jesus was born on this day? That, yeah, honoring him with their lips, but their heart is far from him. Do you know how many atheists celebrate Christmas? What does that tell you? What does that tell you? You know, I mean, let me ask it this way. Is the celebration of Christmas, this holiday, turning our nation toward God? Do we see a nation that is getting closer to God or further away? You know, um, and, and listen, listen, listen closely, listen closely. Does this celebration really turn your children's heart to God? You know, your children are going to grow up. Over 40 years ago, when my parents kept Christmas, I could not bridge the gap. And they tried to put Christ into Christmas. We'd sit around a Christmas tree reading about the story about the birth of Jesus. And I'm thinking, I couldn't make the connection. I couldn't bridge the gap. I thought, well, what's this got to do with Jesus? I mean, I want to open my gifts, you know. I couldn't bridge the gap. But what I'm saying is, children are one thing, but your children are going to grow up. And one day they're going to look back, and they're going to figure out, well, you lied to them about Santa Claus and reindeer, and that the whole thing was pretty much, you know, like a hoax. And they're going to look back, and they're going to realize that your religion was not so authentic, that it wasn't that authentic concerning your lies you told to them. So, you know, I'm just saying that we need to take this seriously. I want to offer you something here, and it'll, it will be offered again at the end of this program. But seven holy days, very early in church history, the Sabbath was abandoned for Sunday keeping, and the two major holidays, the holy days, fell into disuse. They were abandoned for Christmas and Easter, the two major holidays that you see today. Now, I believe that Christ, that we're a lot closer to the return of Christ than we were 2,000 years ago, that when Paul preached. And we need to prepare ourselves, and we need to prepare our church for the return of Jesus Christ. You don't want, if you're a leader in the church, you don't want to be embarrassed when Christ returns and tells you, you remember that guy you heard about preaching about the seven holy days? He was right. You don't want to be publicly humiliated, embarrassed by Jesus Christ when he tells you, it's far better that, you, that, that I tell you, you know, that you're wrong about these issues and you need to be keeping these holy days. It's far better that I tell you than, than when you meet Jesus Christ and he tell you. 